Hey guys, let's power up what I believe to be the world's most powerful single LED light at 5 kilowatts. This takes 5 circuits with 5.8 kilowatt total input power. Wow, that's bright! This is a continuation of the 1 kilowatt LED lighting module build. If you haven't seen the actual build of these uh, one kilowatt modules, go check out uh, this video that's on screen, the first part of this uh, of this video. These are just assembled together like this right now as a test bench to check the thermal performance of the water cooling, uh, to test all the power supplies, and just to get bragging rights of the world's most powerful LED. The modules are powered by these uh, modified Delta-Q uh, golf cart battery chargers. These are supplying 18 amps at about 60 volts to each module. Uh, since last time, I've added a uh, thermal cutout and proper connections. Um, yeah, these are obviously, if the water cooling fails, these modules would probably burst into flames, so I definitely needed some safety there. I had initially guessed that the thermal performance would be marginal with this uh, radiator, and that does seem to be the case. Uh, after, when it, once it's running at steady state with all five LEDs running, we get about 57 degrees Celsius, 58 degrees Celsius in the reservoir, and the Outlet output of the stack is at around just under 70. So we have about a 13 degree C delta T across the stack, which is not too bad. That's tolerable, but the high temperature of the reservoir output of the radiator is uh, is a problem. So I'm going to have to get an either another one of these radiators or swap out of something bigger. But this will do for now. But yeah, I don't like this temperature. They recommend keeping the LEDs below about 60 degrees Celsius uh, base temperature. Since the last video, I've solved the yellow ring problem. You can see there's no visible yellow ring at all. And I'll have, a separate, I'll have a separate video uploaded about that just so that people who have that problem can more easily find it. But the solution is basically to mask off the yellowish area on the outside of where the dyes are, because that area basically just gets excited by the blue light from the LEDs and causes the phosphor to emit yellow. So what we all we have to do is put a mask like this Around, uh, around the outside, and this stops the uh, lens that goes in the front from focusing that yellow area into a ring around the outside. Now, I don't rec I initially tried this with paper, but this tends to char. It doesn't catch fire, but it does sort of turn dark, so I don't recommend doing this for uh, long-term use. I'll have to find something better, like a, make these out of sheets of tin uh, or aluminum foil. But this it seems to do for now, and it was what I could easily cut on the laser cutter. I've cleaned up the messy wires that were on the outside due to the match length wires. I've now just distributed them all throughout uh, here. You can see all the long wires that go to these near LEDs just sort of snake around to, uh, to clean it up. So the outside looks much cleaner now. After running for a while, it looks like some of these uh, bits of paper are starting to burn. So I'm def definitely going to have to swap these out to something else. Perhaps get some uh, sheets of metal uh, cut to this, uh, to this shape. The light intensity from this thing is absolutely ridiculous. About one and a half meters in front of the light, so we're getting 120,000 lux, which is about the intensity of the brightest noonday sunlight when the sun is directly overhead. And three meters away, we're getting about 36, 37,000 lux. The camera is on manual exposure right now. Let's see how this light compares to just the room lights. Yep, barely see anything. This is the uh, final water cooling setup. I've mounted it all on a nice board. Uh, I've got a much larger water tank now, and everything's just, this should be the final configuration. I need, need a much larger tank because the tubing uh, has a lot of uh, volume in it. I've got the tubes uh, set up, sort of, this is just in temporary in this place, and over here it's more of in the, in the final configuration. There's the two um, LEDs without lenses are here, and on this side is sort of floodlights, and then the three spots are up uh, here, and they're all just plumbed in series. So let's give this thing a try and see how the water goes.
I've got the water uh, cooling lines mounted a lot better now with proper uh, cable clamps. I found these tubes, uh, while they're pretty stiff when they're uh, cold, when they get hot or warm they become basically like a wet noodle and tend to droop everywhere, so I had to add a lot more uh, cable clamps than I had uh, initially thought. I've also got the power supplies mounted sort of up on the roof in uh, out of the way places, they don't take up too much room. With the lights mounted all around like this, the illumination is extremely even. I'm very surprised. It is very few shadows at all. Way, way better than the filming I was doing before with those uh, theater spotlights. And in terms of light intensity, over at the sort of the area where we're working... Hello, Trixie. I think she likes the heat from the lights. We're getting about, uh, about 40,000 lux or so. I was hoping for about 60,000, so what I might try later is moving the these two, the ones that are farther away, a little bit closer, although I think this is good enough for now. It's like a sunny day for you, isn't it? You just want to roll all over the ground. Now you're all covered with stuff. While this lighting setup is kind of insane for a garage, it's far from the most powerful uh, lights used for high-speed filming. Uh, the most powerful lighting setup I know of is in, is in the uh, Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's crash test lab, which is 750 kilowatts of incandescent lighting. There's actually a really cool behind-the-scenes video they have about their uh, uh, operations there. Uh, go check it out, there's a link in the video description. I'd like to give a big shout-out to my Patreon supporters for helping make this project possible. If you'd like to see more cool projects like this, uh, for example, I want to build a 10 kilowatt man-portable LED flashlight, uh, keep on pledging. I hope you found this video on this LED lighting setup interesting. Thanks for watching!